So I'm just doing a little demo on how to add a structure internal to a 2D mesh in RAS, and I just thought I'd turn on the video. You know, there are two ways to add a structure into a 2D area. You know, structures, the way that we compute them in RAS, they're kind of fundamentally one-dimensional, and they're one of the features that is kind of better as a one-dimensional feature because of the way there's kind of vertical dimensionality to them. And so we want to add a 1D feature into our 2D area, and there's really two ways to do that. You know, first, we can have two different 2D areas and then have the 1D feature between them as a storage area 2D area connection. And that's fine, but a lot of times there'll be some instability between the multiple areas. And sometimes you just don't want to do that. The area is too big. It's a small structure within it. And so a lot of times it's better to just embed them in your area. And I'm not sure that a lot of people know you can do this. And so I'm just going to show you how to do it. So I've got a little example model here that obviously would need a lot of refinement if it was a real model, but I have a bridge here that I want to model. And you know, the 2D model wouldn't do terrible here. You know, it's going to compute flow over that bridge and through it. But you know, to get this right, you really do have to go in and put in the bridge feature. And so we're going to start with a brake line because, well, first of all, that's probably what we should have done to begin with. This is high ground. It requires brake line through it. You know, this would be modeled completely wrong if we didn't have a brake line over the top of it. And so we'll just start there. We'll go in and we'll um, draw a brake line. I, I'm already started the edit. I'm going to choose the edit tool and I'll just draw a brake line along the top of this feature. And I press shift if I want to move things while I'm digitizing. Double click, we'll call this bridge. Okay, and so we have a break line and now I'm, maybe I want a little bit more resolution around here. So I'll go in, this is a hundred foot mesh, but I'll go in and make this break line maybe 50 and I'll do maybe three near repeats of 50 and see what that does. And then I'll go in and I'll right click and I'll enforce that break line. All right, and so now I've got a pretty nice mesh around my bridge. You'll notice that one thing I did is this break line that I used in order to align the mesh with flow, I broke that up. I split it and moved it away from the bridge because if these break lines cross, you're going to get some problems right at the bridge. Okay, so that's fine. I have a break line. Now it's just a better model, but I want this to actually be a structure. So to do that, I'm actually going to stop editing here and I'll say, yes, I want to save that. And then I'll go to my RAS model and I'm going to open the geometry. I'll go in here and say file and open and open the actual geometry that I'm working on. And you'll see that we have these break lines in here that show up in the geometry. And so I'm going to zoom into this structure right here. This, and right now it's just a break line. But now if I click that break line and say convert this break line to internal storage area 2D area connection and call it bridge. Now you'll notice that it immediately becomes a structure. And if I come over here to storage area 2D area connection, it is now a structure that has actually pulled the bathymetry off of the top of your actual train. And so you could go in here and say, well, actually, we know the elevation of this road, and so we're going to go put that in. Um, but for now, let's just say that actually we want to keep that, but we want to have a bridge opening here. Well, right now we just have this kind of accidental bridge opening at station 429, and it's about, you know, it's about 12 feet wide. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go fill that in first, and then we'll put a big old culvert in there for the bridge opening. So I'm going to go to 429 and find where it drops to well below 4,900. And that's this area in here. So I'll just go in there and delete those rows. Or I could go in and copy and make those all 4,900, bring them up to grade and say, okay. And now I didn't quite finish the job. It looks like we'll go back down there 
and finish the job until we're back up to 4900. All right, so now we have this structure so that we have weir flow over the entire structure, but we wanna go in and we wanna put in a culvert. And so let's say that it's gonna be, we'll call it a circular 12 foot culvert, but we could make it a box. Actually, make, let's make it a box because we know that the span is 12. And let's say that the rise is gonna be something like this. It's gonna be about 18 foot rise with an invert at 4AAO. So we'll go in here and we'll give it an 18 foot rise and the barrel name will be main and we'll give it an upstream and downstream station of 429. That is where it is on the station across the structure. And we kind of know that because we see it in the original bathymetry. The down, upstream and downstream invert, well, we're gonna call that you know, 488. 0.5, both upstream and downstream. You can go in and block this. We do this sometimes with the debris flow models because these structures get blocked during debris flows. And then the culvert length, well, for now, I'm just gonna say that the culvert length is 25 and we'll revisit that at some point. Entrance loss coefficients, 0 0.5, and then we'll just give it a meaning zen of 0 0.025 top and bottom. Okay, and so now we've got a culvert and we should be able to compute flow through here. You'll notice that we are getting flow from this cell and we're sending it to this cell. And so now if I come here and I say save, I close out and I open the structure and RAS mapper, you'll notice that here we actually have a 2D storage area connection and you can go in and you can actually plot the culvert barrel. And when you go down in there, you can see that the culvert barrel is pulling out of this cell and entering into that cell. Now, this is something you actually want to be a little bit careful about because if this cell was small or if this cell was mostly high elevation, well, you wouldn't necessarily want to pull water out of this cell because one of the rules is, is that a cell can't empty in a time step. If and it, you have a pretty significant time step and there's not a lot of water this cell. This actually happens a lot in steep streams. This cell can go empty during your time step and it'll make your model unstable. And so what you can do is that, you know, this doesn't actually have to be attached to this cell. You can go in, get your measure tool, go trace where this would pick up and drop off, and then you copy those coordinates to a clipboard we go back to our culvert, our 2D connection, and we can paste those in here. So now the culvert is drawing from this deeper, bigger cell and dropping off in this deeper, bigger cell that is really more indicative of what the hydraulics are through that area. So that's how you add an internal structure to a 2D area. The workshop I'm actually doing is urban debris flow modeling, and we end up doing this a lot with urban debris flow models because you have a lot of small internal structures. And uh, that's how you do it. My name is Stanford Gibson. I'm the sediment transport specialist on the HC RAS team. And this video was funded by the HHNC SET program.